Hello folks. Well, as you may have seen in my previous Optera 7 foot wingspan flying wing videos, I had pretty good hand launches until that very last time when I launched and that 10 inch prop cut my finger and tendons requiring an ER visit for x-rays, a tetanus shot, 27 stitches, two repaired tendons. <laughs> Finger's pretty good now. Uh, I can't bend it like this. I can bend it about there and uh, that's about it right now, which is a lot further than it was because when you go any further, it hurts like that. No, I'm only pointing all this out in case you're considering getting any pusher style plane. Know that pushers are like jets. The elevator and ailerons do not work until it gets up to speed as there's no wind being blown across them like a front engine puller plane. So you must really heave them, especially with this underpowered almost seven foot wing. Also, with this one, the controls are very soft, as I will show at the end. It's a pretty big plane, actually, to try to throw into the heavy winds we have here. It weighs five pounds. Some said I should throw it with the motor off, as it'll glide a long way. Well, yes, this thing glides a long way, all right, when landing at 30 mile per hour. But I can't launch it or throw it at 30 mile per hour. I'm pretty strong, <laughs> but I'm 73, and... It only says throttle up, throw it into the wind at 10 to 15 degrees, and fly away. Also in their disclaimers, it says to follow the instructions or serious injury can take place. So that's what I did. I followed the instructions. But nothing's 100%. But I don't give up easily. Well, I do appreciate the comments and the legitimate suggestions. And uh, some even said to throw a discus style. Well, that works with smaller wings most of the time. I just could not figure out how to hold this wing with my left hand and transmitter in the right. Here you can take a look and see what I'm talking about. I couldn't even get a glove and finger in there together where I actually felt comfortable trying to launch it that way for full power. I know, I tried. So here's the difference in this thing and my F-27 Evolution. Now this can be thrown discus style or maybe this way, but still, I use my launcher on it, it's got plenty of power. Here we go. Trying to pick this thing up with one hand with a transmitter dangling from your neck is pretty much impossible. I tried. It is too heavy. I can't get the I can't get it off the ground, especially out here at the tip, because it's no heavy when you grab it there. So you gotta somehow grab it up here. And I and it's so slippery and thick here, I cannot grab it. Even if I try to grab it here, I can't really get it off the ground. Not pretty strong. So for those who say, oh you gotta just hand launch it, discus style. I uh, tell you, it's going to be pretty difficult. So, and on the bottom of this thing, it's hard to find a place to grab. These are the two finger mounts. I can barely get my fingers in there with no gloves on and try to hold this thing and hand launch it. You can't do it this way, you're going to pick your neck off. So you've got to get it out in front of you and you have to throw this this 10 inch prop spinning in your face, which is really close. And if a gust of wind gets you, it could go right up and nail you in the arm. And so very difficult to hand launch this thing. Now I want you to see, I put skids on the bottom here. Right here. These are metal skids and they're also guides so on my uh, on my dolly and ski ramp that keeps the plane centered. And uh, it's, there, it's pretty big, I'll tell you that. Also, it does not say in the manual how to move the throttle stick to full power while holding the transmitter in the right hand with the thumb on the elevator aileron stick. <laughs> I do not use harnesses because, like I said, I bump switches, etc. by accident, especially on my 3D helicopters. And so the only other way is to use my mouth to raise the throttle stick. I'm used to doing that anyway, and I've done that for years. I did find a problem that's plagued this plane in all of my flights, but I thought it was my batteries. I'll explain that in a minute, so hang on. 
So, uh, for obvious reasons, and I know you don't blame me, I am never going to hand launch this thing again. So, I'm using my homemade dolly, as you saw. It has big 5-inch air field tires on the front to give it some angle of attack and flat 2.5-inch roller skating wheels on the back. It will ride on top of the grass easily, and I'm going to demonstrate that this summer or whenever we see grass again. When I first tried it, I put a guide string down to get it to go straight down the narrow road. I pounded a screwdriver into the ground, I guess not far enough, to tie the string to it at the end. It actually wasn't quite deep enough and the dolly hit and slightly bumped over at the end of the launch, but it worked. So after successfully flying my DHC2 Beaver off of the snow recently with its floats, I decided I was going to try to make a launcher for the Optera to see if I could launch it off the snow. I tried several different methods, but in each case it just didn't seem to have the power. It sounded like my batteries were dying, you know, right at the startup. I tried several batteries and even a 14.4 volt, but the speed went full then immediately slowed down. So I knew I wasn't getting enough power. It slows down. So anyway, next I tried to use my floats from my Viver to launch it. And that's when I decided to look at my other videos. I found that it did it every time. And that's when I suspected something was wrong with the ESC. The one that it came with is buried inside and it's a 40 amp version. I decided to change it to an 80 amp one that I had because I intended to also use a bigger 14.4 battery instead of 11.1. I knew the motor could handle it, but I wanted a high amp ESC this time so it would not burn up. Not that it would matter because it's defective anyway. Well, that certainly fixed the high to low speed and really gave it some punch on takeoff. But alas, all my snow launch designs failed until the last one. Maybe the earlier ones would have actually worked with the new SC, but now you're going to see what really happened on my last launch attempt and what went wrong at the end. And somehow... As I mentioned previously, and I show here again, well, many folks commented in my last video telling me they easily discus launched this, but I can't even pick it up off my dolly with one hand. Well, my steak box foam worked pretty good, but it's pretty brittle too, as you'll see. Well, I'm also no stranger to catapults either, and have been building and flying them for over 35 years after being on the USS Midway aircraft carrier and got the idea. I built my night flyer apult and have launched all kinds of machines off, including helicopters. I even built a small one on a boat to launch my tiny Sukhoi. Well, all were destroyed in that fire, but thanks a lot for those suggestions. I do know how to do it. It's also hard to pound a stake in the frozen ground covered with snow, and I'm probably not going to invest in that expensive rubber surgical tubing just for this plane when my wheel dolly works just fine and using what I have on hand. And we're going to see if my sled works. Adding wheels on this would also be a lot of work with nose wheel steering, servos, etc. Plus, would have to have long landing gear struts to clear the prop on rotation. From my experience, they would really bounce on landing as these wings are short coupled like my scimitars. Also, a bungee tied to the stake in the ground sounds like a good idea too till you try to pull it tight and the stake comes out and nails you while you're trying to hook it to the plane, especially this one. I know as I've had that happen and why I built all my catapults self-contained. And the wheels don't work worth a damn on the snow either.
Well, I've got no guide string to go straight, and I can't steer it, so back home I added some skag runners so it would go straight. You know, this thing is louder than my nitro planes. Never give up. That could have been my finger. It sounded like it. Yeah. Did you break the prop? No, did not break the prop. Well, the reason that happened is the ski caught on my footprint ditch in the snow and stopped abruptly just as I pulled up and the prop ran into it. The sled was supposed to just coast out of the way. Okay, this is after the uh, flight. As you can see, there's not even the slightest nick on the props or anything. That foam took care of it. You know, you look at these elevons. When I was coming out of a loop, I mean, I'm like holding full up. I didn't think it was going to pull enough. That's the maximum amount of up you can get on this thing. And that's because they're elevons, because you need aileron. So when you go to full aileron, see, that has to go up even more. And you can actually hear it stalling. Uh, kind of weak, but, uh, you know, it's an easy flying airplane. So special thanks to my wife for coming out here time after time as I would not give up. I learned a lot and hope you enjoyed the trial and error till success. Thanks for watching folks and God bless.